Hello everybody, this is Sandeep here. Welcome to eConstruct Design and Build Private Limited. In this particular video, we are going to discuss certain things about the PBD, which is Performance Based Design. What is Performance Based Design? So let's get one example. Let's understand through the example. This is the mobile in which you will see that this is Samsung's flagship mobile S23 Ultra. If you are buying a mobile which is around one and one and a half lakh rupees, that time you will see that you wanted to protect the mobile. That's why we generally purchase the tempered glass as well as the cover. So that accidentally if it is falling down, the mobile should be protected. Now, <clears throat> the cost of the tempered glass and cost of this cover is comparatively very, very low. Not even probably 1 or 2 percent of the cost of the mobile. So that during the construction also it is like that or during the design of building also it is like that. While performing the performance based design, we will come to know that at every particular corners or are at a particular junctions, you will see that these are the, uh, you know, areas where the failure chances are quite more. For example, you might have seen in the case of mobile, uh, there is a drop test, there is this test, that test. So people have done a lot of research in identifying that where exactly the mobile will get tampered or the life of the mobile will be jeopardized. So for that, the people, they des the designers of this cover and the tempered glass, they make sure that at, you know, even if it is falling down from this particular height, the mobile will be saved. Similarly, for construction also, for designing also, whether it is RCC design, steel structure, composite structures, performance based design is the new era or the new invention, new system that is getting developed. ASC 41 is the code for that. Unfortunately, in India, we do not have the Indian code. But certain American codes, they are getting developed in such a way that how the cost of the construction can be reduced by improvising the performance of a building during the event of earthquake or uh, excessive wind. So in the performance based design, what are the different stages are there? So there are basically three stages. There are subsequently other stages are there. First one is basically the life safety that during the event of earthquake, what, I, what should not happen is the life of the, of the people which are residing inside the structure should be saved. Second thing is the collapse prevention. What is collapse prevention is the building will not get collapsed suddenly so that you know mass killing or mass uh, human loss should not happen. Uh, and the third one is immediate occupancy. Immediate occupancy means the earthquake has happened, the ground motions has happened and immediately the person has started uh, living there. Just there are some small damages are there and that you are rectifying and you know you are, go, uh, you are uh, uh, ready to go along with the life uh, or you are ready to go living inside the building. So uh, what is basically the uh, immediate occupancy, life safety and collapse prevention? So the first one is uh, immediate occupancy. Earthquake has happened immediately within few hours or maybe one or two days. You do the small repairs and you start occupying the building. Second one is the life safety. Life safety means yes, the building is getting deteriorated. The building is get, buildings are getting damaged, but the life life uh, surety is there. The life, loss of life is not there. Third one is collapse prevention. The buildings are massive collapse probably is happening. I mean, different parts of the buildings are getting completely damaged, but it is not sudden collapse or the entire building shear collapse is not happening. And in that particular area, the mass killing is uh, uh, restricted, but certain damage to the people or maybe the loss of few people's life may happen. So these are basically three stages through which the performance based design is, is getting it done. Now, why I'm telling you all this, it is very important, like you see, initially, very, very long time back, you might might have seen that there is a working stress method. Second one, there is a limit state method. And now there is a performance based method. Previously, if you if, if you would have seen the working stress method, the sec section sizes, the column sizes, the beam sizes, the slab sizes, and all the structural member sizes were very heavy, because you are not allowing any bending theory, there are no cracking allowed. 
So that's why the section sizes were very high. The new technology has come, the limit state method in which certain amount of bending along with that certain amount of cracking is permissible, permissible crack width and all it is allowed, maybe 0.2 mm, 0.3, 0.35 mm based on the codal, uh, uh, you know, clauses. So you are allowing certain members to have the bending. So once the bending is allowed, you are allowing certain amount of cracking. And that's why, but it is there in the limit, limiting criteria. That's why we give the certain factor of safety, which is basically 1.5, 1.2, 0.9. That is what we call it as the uh, partial safety factor. So if you apply the partial safety factor and the limiting width, uh, the crack width and these things are okay, then you are good to go. The advantage of the limit state method over to the working stress method was basically the savings. The same building with working stress method and with the limit state method, the reduction in the cost would be, you know, around 75-80 percentage savings was there. Now, this is performance based design. It is far more advanced than the first two methods. And believe me, everywhere the performance is required. If you take a mobile, you know, if you charge it, within 10 minutes of charge, it goes to 60-75 percentage of you know the almost it is full charge so and yes it it it, it basically gives the life i mean the, the the battery life is basically for for uh, throughout one day the charging battery life so performance is getting increased and this is a demand through the market that yes with the less amount of money you are get giving larger uh, you know the performance Similarly, in the buildings, in the process buildings, in the factory buildings, in the residential, commercial buildings, when you go to the hospitals, hotels, everywhere, the people are have started working into the performance-based business design because, you know, ultimately the IRR, the, the, the revenue comes out from the building. It has to be ensured that that much amount of returns we are getting, even though during the worst situations of the earthquake or through the wind. So performance based design would be the next era that you need to start learning. Okay, and for that AC41 clauses you need to start going through. At the same time, through the ETABs and SAP 2000, you can do certain practice so that you know the performance of the structures can be enhanced. One more thing I would like to tell you that currently in the Indian code, we do not have that kind of facility. So you need to respect the other international codes to take care of this. One more thing is you know, you will not be able to design the entire building for the performance based design, but currently you can, you know, uh, maybe 0.25%, 0.5% 0 0 of the cost of the building can be increased, but the life of the structure, it will be increased by maybe, you know, 50, 80 or 100 years. That is definitely possible through this particular method. If you have seen certain buildings in, in Mumbai, particularly at... Uh, Kalan, Dombili, or you know certain areas where which has been developed a little late, a little outside the Mumbai, or in Mumbai also the the SR building, which is which basically the uh, uh, you know the slum uh, rehabilitation buildings. You would have seen that you know only after 10 to 15 years or maybe 20 years the building comes up like for retrofitting, restorations and all. So the complete ROI is not you know happening the returns of whatever the investment people are doing that those amount of returns are not happening that's why the real estate industry is facing massive massive problems if you go to the certain uh, european countries you will see that 350 400 500 years of lifespan of certain rcc structures are there but why not in india because we are basically working on per square foot what is your rate per square foot um, and what are the you know consultancy rate per square foot that is the war going on so we are much more targeting to the economy of the building construction just that you know it is getting constructed so that i should start living instead of that the mindset of you guys the end customer should be changed in such a way that at least two or three generations should enjoy living their life in this particular building by which the performance ratings which is U.S. Resiliency Council. We do not have that kind of council here. So the people who, if you are watching and if you are a code writing authority, please work out this kind of, you know, council in India also. 
which is basically the extended version of the seismic or uh, the uh, seismic engineering. And uh, if cert certain such kind of burdens are given to the structural engineers and to the developers, I'm sure that the real estate in India will have you know good amount of life and it will help to the nation building also. So I hope you really like this particular video. If you really like it, please give a thumbs up. If you really loved it, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.